Hello, welcome to Josh's Green Garage. Uh, today, we're gonna do a little video on one of these John Deere home maintenance kits for the lawn and garden tractors. Uh, this one specifically, of course, will be for the X580. Um, these are, are gonna vary depending on your model number, uh, whether it's gas, diesel, 100 series, 200 series, um, all of them, you know, different spark plugs, if they have spark plugs, um, you know, different air filters, uh, different oil, depending on where you're, uh, living, you know, different oil recommendations, as I say, the kits are going to probably have the same oils, but, uh, we're going to get into it and, uh, do a little, I guess, yearly tune up, you would say, and, uh, go through installing one of these kits. I'm going to do it, uh, part by part. So I'll change engine oil, I'll change spark plugs, and then I'll change the air filter, um, in separate videos, just so that way it's not a super long video, you know, if you're only looking for maybe one specific part or you're not so much looking uh, for information on these kits, but more so just how do I change the air filter? Uh, how do I do these spark plugs? You know, things like that. Or if you're trying to just see a certain aspect of the engine or, you know, anything like that. So uh, let's, uh, let's bring you in a little closer and we'll see what's in the kit. All right, so you can see the part number for this kit is LG265. Um, this is going to fit the X580, and there's also a number of other tractors here that it specifies that it'll fit. So X300R is starting with serial number uh, 150,001, what is it? Uh, 150, and then X300s with engines, the FS541V, uh, X320s with the FS651V engine, um, any X500 with an FS730V, which is this one, uh, an S240 and an X590. So that's what will fit um, this specific kit. Now inside the kit, we're gonna get uh, a John Deere oil filter. This is part number AM125424C. We're going to get an air filter. Uh, this is actually um, a Kawasaki part, not a John Deere part. Um, I'm not sure specifically what part number on there is the one you need, but I'll bring it close enough so that you can read these. So those are the uh, the numbers that you could look that up for if you need to find one if you're not planning on buying this kit. You're also going to get a pre-filter for that air filter, so you don't need to reuse the one that's in there. Um, when we get into the manual, we'll see that it actually says you can reuse those. You can wash them. Um, now with the fuel filter, I want to say when I bought the mower and got this kit, I, I got another one just to see, to compare the two. So I can't remember which one of these, if you get one in here that's just open, or if you get one that's actually, uh, in, you know, a sealed bag. But anyway, the part number is AM116304. So the one that I, I would imagine just bought and off of a part number that I found is the same one that's in the kit, so... I don't know, I must have had a suspicion at one point that the filters weren't correct, I don't know. I'm not sure why I would have done that. So you're gonna get two NGK spark plugs. Oh, we'll get to that in a second. Two NGK spark plugs. Um, these are part number BPR4ES6578. You're going to get a little maintenance reminder sticker. Um, honestly, unless you are cutting a huge amount of land or uh, using this for a ton of different tasks, um, I don't know that you're quite going to get to like the oil service life or any of that because we'll get into that. This thing actually has really long um, service intervals. Um, so I, I don't think you're going to be doing some of this maintenance a whole heck of a lot. So, um, you know, yearly, honestly, I think is going to be fine for most people. Um, unless you're using these things really hard or if you're in pretty rough conditions and then lastly you're going to get two quarts of john deere turf guard 10w30 engine oil um, part number on these is ty22029 um, i think this is going to be pretty standard uh, across everything um, i know for the d105 that i had i used the same stuff in it um, that's just a good, a good all around oil. So, uh, that's what's in the kit. Um, we're going to first go into just an oil change. 
Uh, so we'll be using, of course, our engine oil and the filter. Uh, we won't be getting into any of the other stuff. Um, some tools that we're going to need, of course, an oil pan. Um, you're going to need a fuel filter wrench, depending on if it's a little tight to get off. I'm going to try to do it by hand, but we'll see. Um, and of course, you know, a socket wrench and everything to fit that. And I make a lot of messes, so I have some soak up pads and paper towels too. So uh, let's move over towards the engine and uh, we'll get to it. Alrighty, let's first open up the hood. This is on the left side of the tractor. Um, it might have been kind of obvious, but I figured I'd state it. Um, I'm going to try to do this uh, reading steps from the instruction manual. Um, honestly, I can do this myself without it. Um, but, you know, for anybody really interested in the steps and any specifics, warnings, cautions, things like that, we'll read it. Um, let's see here. Okay, so servicing engine, um, changing engine oil and filter. Uh... We're gonna start out run engine to warm oil. I ran it for just a few seconds, honestly, running it around the garage a little. Um, obviously the oil's gonna drain better if it's warmer, but it won't be too much of a problem regardless. Uh, park machine safely, lift hood, we already did that. Put drain pan under drain valve A. So right here is your drain valve. It's supposed to be toolless, but they also do have a quarter inch uh, you know, socket wrench. Uh, detent there so that you can you know use a socket wrench if it's on there tight um, and then we're going to remove the drain cap and drain the oil into the drain pan allowing it to drain completely um, you can also it says to remove let's see remove the dipstick um, as a next step but we'll do that in between anyway just to uh, help that oil drain a little bit faster so I will say first off, putting the putting the mower deck down, um, there's actually a good amount of room in here to fit a drain pan. I know, I think the D105, I had to force uh, a cup or something in there um, to uh, catch anything. And I think I still managed to get a bunch on the frame, but uh, I don't think we'll have too much of a problem with this. There's quite a bit of room under there. So, see if we can just get this off by hand, which we can. It was very easy. I'm going to just hold this up because who knows if this is going to shoot out. Okay, it's not shooting out. And then we'll open this up just to help it. Uh, you can see it kind of started coming out a little faster. We'll let this drain and be back. All right, we're pretty well drained. So it didn't take too long. I mean, there's not really a whole lot of oil in these things. Um, so I'll just give it a quick wipe. and then put our plug back in. Obviously inspect that little O-ring on there, make sure it's not ripped or anything. And then should be good to go. So next is to place the drain pan or funnel under the oil filter tray, remove the old filter, wipe off filter tray. Put a light coat of fresh clean oil on the new filter gasket. Install replacement oil filter by turning oil filter to the right clockwise until the rubber gasket contacts filter base. Tighten filter an additional one half turn. And then install and tighten drain cap. So it tells you to do that part last, but whatever. I always do it in this order. It's just the way I do it. So I'm going to see. Um, so if... I can already tell the tray here, it's going to let oil seep right down onto the frame. So I'm actually going to grab a funnel real quick. How about that? It even matches. I'll probably have to hold that there while I get this off. But I'm going to see if I 
can't get it off. This plastic piece is in the way. It looks like it can come off with a bolt. I tried it real quick, but there's some tabs behind it that uh, may need taken off. So um, that doesn't look like it's gonna work too well. So I'm gonna try it with the oil filter wrench. Hopefully this works a bit better. There we go, at least to get it loosened. This isn't the greatest filter wrench out there. This is just a frame one that I bought for vehicles and half the time they don't even work. So once you get them off, usually you can get them off by hand the next, next times after. And then I forgot my filter and of course I got oil everywhere. That's a typical uh, oil change for me. Forget something and make a mess. that down I'll try to soak up what oil I got on the frame there it doesn't look like I got too much but it's still annoying I get making these videos and then I start rushing And then we'll clean that ring where that uh, rubber O-ring sits. You want to make sure that's clean so you have a good seal. Clean out this tray as best we can. Then crack open one of our new oil containers. And I'll usually just pour a little bit into the cap. That way I can use that to put some fresh oil on the new filter. So just dip your finger in, rub that around. This is all pretty standard stuff for most people, I'm sure. Um, but on the off chance you need to see how this is done, here it is. So there we go. Got some on there, I also forgot. I usually uh, put some oil on the threads too. For all my vehicles and whatnot. And then we'll just spin that right back on. So until it contacts and then they say a half turn, I usually go until like that's obviously way more than a half turn after it contacted. Um, I usually go to where it's hand tight to where I know I'll still be able to get it off. So that should be fine. Um, you can always check it, see if you can spin it off by hand. And I can, so I know about where I want to be. And that is the drain and changing the filter. Now we'll get into adding oil. All right, now to fill the oil, uh, it says to begin with approximately 2.1 quarts. Um, they give you two quarts of oil, so um, I know I bought an extra quart just to have on hand. Um, honestly though, like the two quarts is probably gonna be enough. I know generally if you fill things up, uh, at least when I did the transaxle, if you fill it up to the capacity that it lists, uh, you overflow it everywhere. So I'm just going to dump probably oh, one and a half in and see where we're at and go from there. So we'll pull out the dipstick and then this is really easy actually to get to so you shouldn't need any kind of filter for filling this and we'll just start dumping our oil in.
You get a little too fast though. Won't well, drain quick enough. And then per usual, you make a mess. That one wasn't too bad though. All right, so that's about a quart and a half. Um, we'll throw the, the dipstick in here and see where we're at so far. So one thing to note um, on these, it says for correct oil level, do not turn cap on threads. So I know some stuff uh, like vehicles, like you'll push the dipstick all the way in, you know, pull it out to check it. Um, some things it'll tell you specifically to screw it in, other things not. So this one you don't. So what I usually do, I'll put it in and then turn it counterclockwise just so that you can see it kind of drop down. Hopefully you saw it dropped down a little bit just to where the threads kind of seated down on the other th set of threads. Um, but I'm not actually turning it to where it pulls it in any further. So we'll just let it sit there, pull it out. And it looks like we are at the uh, third dot there next to full. So uh, we'll put just a little bit more in, but I don't think it's really even going to take that whole two quarts. Um, and you got to think too, you know, when they print these specifications, that's like the actual specification if the engine had absolutely no oil. So obviously when you're draining these, you're not going to get every bit of oil out. Um, so, you know, not taking a full two quarts, you know, isn't, isn't worrying me. Put a little more. Check it again. Get it to drop in there. And it looks like we are right at the full line. So I'm going to call it good there. Um, so for me, that ended up taking, where's the little line? Right about there. So there's about. 10 ounces or so uh, left. So probably about one and one and three quarter quarts did it. So uh, then from there, that's pretty much it for uh, oil changing. So uh, of course you'll want to start the engine up, run it a minute, um, then you know check again, uh, make sure you don't need to oil or uh, add any oil. Um, that is actually the next steps in the manual to start and run engine at idle, check for leaks, uh, fix any leaks, and then check the oil level at as necessary. And that is it for an oil change. So hopefully if you had any question on this process, it's a very simple process, but Hey, you never know. Um, or you just wanted to see what may be involved in changing one of these. If it's any different than, you know, a simple 100 series, uh, I'm here to tell you it's 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 not any different it's it's just as easy um possibly easier i feel like getting this drain plug out uh, was a lot easier than i remembered on the 100 series so uh so yeah uh, if you have any questions comments whatever feel free uh, if you haven't seen i set up an email for the account now so if you have anything more specific you need to ask or if you need to send a picture or video of a problem you're having or hey you know, I have a 580, you know, I'm having this problem with whatever, you know, let me know and uh, we'll see if we can get answered. So uh, thanks for watching. Stay tuned for the, in, uh, the air filter and the fuel filter change. Have a good one. All right. So that pretty much concludes my uh, John Deere X580 uh, home maintenance kit engine oil change video. Um, I know it's simple stuff, but never hurts you know if you're looking this kind of stuff up um you know everybody's you know view and opinion and way of doing things you know you know may have different value than others and you know you might pick up something that you never seen or done before um so yeah figured you know why not make one um i do want to bring some attention to this maintenance reminder though so one thing i was always worried about with new equipment 
whether it be, you know, a lawnmower like this, um, you know, a, a weed whacker, uh, a chainsaw, uh, four wheeler, you know, whatever. Um, if it's new, there's usually breaking periods for stuff. There was for a four wheeler that I've had. Um, there was for my weed whacker, my mist blower, like there's breaking periods. Um, but I couldn't find anything for this. So couldn't find anything online, couldn't find anything in the owner's manual. Um, so you pretty much just run it. Um, I wasn't worried about, you know, keeping it at half throttle or anything. Like I would run it at full throttle when mowing, everything like that. And uh, I didn't do that oil change at the initial 50 hours when I did transaxle. Um, I went off of this maintenance reminder. So the maintenance schedule is in the owner's manual, but it is also here inside the hood. Um, so it is conveniently placed. So, you know, you're checking your oil before mowing for the day, you know, give it a look, make sure you're not going over your hours for everything. But, uh, oil is on there every hundred hours, not even at an initial interval. So every hundred hours you do oil. Um, don't do it at the initial 50, do it after that. The only thing initial, you know, at 50 is, uh, the transaxle and wheel bolt torque. So, uh, you know, get it, run it, enjoy it, you know, change it yearly. If you don't put a hundred hours on in a year, um, I really thought I was going to put way more than a hundred, but I didn't. I'm only at like 60, 68 or so. Um, but we had a, a bit drier of a summer. So had it been previous summer, you know, would have probably had a lot more hours. Um, but yeah, that's all I got for this. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, whatever, uh, feel free. Um, I definitely get them answered. Um, I also added a new email for the channel. So if you have any more in-depth questions or anything uh, that you'd like to communicate about, feel free, send me an email and uh, I'll get back to you. So thanks for watching. Have a good one.